Hello friends, happy Tuesday. Hope your day is going great so far. Um, yeah, let's get do it. Let's get to it. Um, so today I totally wanted to sorry, my necklace is bothering me. I really wanted to share with you guys again from our commentary that we're going through in the book of Proverbs, which is a Christ-centered exposition, exalting Jesus in the book of Proverbs. Um, but it's um it's great whenever I'm reading something in the Word in the morning and I get like an aha moment and um, I really do feel like, wow, like I've, I mean, I feel like I learn every time I read, but there's just those days where it's just kind of special and you're just like, wow, God, this is amazing. And I find it in those days, um, uh, something unique happens and this happened, it's happened to me a handful of times because what I try to do is um, I do a passage in the Old Testament. I do uh, the Proverbs of the day, meaning today's the 26th, so I read Proverbs 26. And then I'm also going through a book in the New Testament. So I write, I read from all three books, okay? And um, so today I had to read, I'm going through uh, 2 Kings, and I read a passage there. And then when I was going through the book of John, which is the book that I'm reading right now, there was a passage there that for me, I felt like the Holy Spirit really connected those two. Like I read something here and then I read something there and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's totally what I was reading in the book of Second Second Kings. Um, and only the Holy Spirit does that. And this is like proof again that God is real and God speaks through his words. That there is no coincidence that I can't just be like, okay, I'm kind of skimming through this. And oh yeah, I just so happened to be going through this and that's why I'm reading it. No, God is so amazing that through scripture, these this collection, library of books, library of books that were written, you know, how many thousands of years, thousands of years ago, um, it's still relevant today. And I can still read it today and I can still learn a lot about it today and I can still have God speak to me in my life today through this book. So really quick, I'm going to go through what I read this morning in 2 Kings. So in essence, we are taking a pause from our um, the commentary that we're going through in the book of Proverbs because I really want to share this with you guys. Um, it's things where like, um, yeah, God speaks to me and I don't say anything to you. When I feel like God reveals something to me and then I don't share it with you, like I want to be able to be open and be like, hey guys, God spoke to me about this today and I want to share it with you because one of you who is listening to this might totally need it. Um... So yeah, so I'm going to the book of 2 uh, Kings, and I today I read chapter 19. And the book of Kings, if you've read it before, or if you're familiar with it, it's a collection of all the kings in Israel, that Israel had. Um, and this was something that God didn't initially want for Israel. He wanted God to be their only, his only king, their only king. Um, but they kept on persisting, they kept on persisting, and God, you know, um, still in his sovereignty and still in his plan decided to okay you guys want a king we're gonna, i'm gonna give you a king um so this wasn't something that god you know because god knew our hearts and uh, he knew why we wanted to, why they wanted a king because they wanted to worship the king um so 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 anyway so then second kings i'm going through chapter 19 and i'm going through um the life of king hezekiah throughout this book you have tons of kings that uh, were kings of israel and um, they, a lot, like you read their history, right? And a lot of them, like they're, it's only like a paragraph or a few sentences, like, and this was the king of, you know, Israel from the time he was whatever age and how many, how many years. And it says they did not, it either says if they did what was right in the eyes of the Lord or if they didn't. And m the majority of them did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord. And God still had mercy. God still had like a remnant in the in the in Israel, and even though he was his chosen people, um, he gave them into the hands of like their enemies to teach them something, to teach them, hey, I am your God, and there are consequences for not following me, for making a vow, a covenant with covenant with me, and not going through with it. Um, so Hezekiah was actually a king that did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. And in this particular passage, he is crying out to God and saying, God, Yahweh, please rescue me because there was a king, king of uh, Syria, which is one of their enemies, was going to go after him. And he was fearful of this king. And he was crying out to Jesus, I mean, to, to God, um, saying, hey, I, I need you like this. He's going to come after me and I have done what was right in your eyes. And, you know, I count on you and I trust in you, but please deliver us out of the hand of our enemy. Well, this was God's response to him. Okay. 
and I'll let you know what stood out to me. Um, so it says, therefore, uh, the, thus says the Lord concerning the king of Syria. So this was the message that God had for Hezekiah, that king, concerning the king of Syria. He shall not come into the city or shoot an arrow there or come before it with a shield or cast up a siege um, mount against it. By the way that he came, by the same uh, he shall return, and he shall not come into the city, declares the Lord. So he's telling Hezekiah, uh, pretty much, the king is not going to even enter the city. He's not going to attack you. Like, I'm going to protect you from the king of Syria. All right? Hezekiah cried out, and it seems like God just answered him because he heard him. He just responded, you know, um, in his own way. He's, but he was like, hey, I'm, I'm going to protect you. Okay? This next sentence is what just completely, like, blows my mind, okay? Um, it says, For I will defend this city to save it, all right? For my own sake and for the sake of my servant, David. So if I read here, the reason why God is saying he's going to save the city is not because Hezekiah cried out, it's because he absolutely loves Hezekiah because even since Hezekiah was faithful to God and it was right with David was right in the eyes of the Lord he said I'm going to protect your city and this city for my sake and for the sake of my servant David but when there's two reasons for something there's always one that stands out the most and that is the first one that he said you know what I'm saying why he's going to deliver him for God's sake, meaning because I want to, because it's for me, because I have a plan that I'm going to fulfill, um, and it's because I'm in control and because I want to do it, okay? And um, I love that because if you want, you see here evidence that God is a God-centered God. The reason why he does anything is for his glory and for him alone, um, and we can very easily step back and say, hold on, God, like you're so into yourself, like very selfish, very, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is like not even something that you teach, right? Because you ask us not to be selfish. You ask us not to think about ourselves, but then you're the one doing this for your sake. Um, and I remember preaching by David Platt and where he's saying, if you want God to, um, exalt anyone and to bring glory to anyone, who do you think he should be giving glory to? If he gives the glory to anyone else or does anything for anybody else's sake in that sense, like primarily, if not for himself, who? Because if he chooses anything else, nature, love, the sun, I don't know, he's exalting that thing above himself and he stops being God in that sense. God is so holy and so righteous that he understands that and he exalts himself. It is his glory. Is the only person in the world who could be selfish and um, it's perfect. Like that's how it should be because he is holy, you know. Um, and this again it reminds us that God is a God-centered God. Why he does anything is for himself because we are his children and he, has also, he loves us beyond belief as well we reap the benefits, but it is primarily for him. And you see that in this text where he says, Hezekiah, I'm going to protect the city and I'm not, go I'm not gonna let them come to you, first of all, for my sake, okay? And the second part, the second reason here also is amazing, all right? It says, for the sake of my servant David. So right here you think, okay, God's doing it for himself, but man, he loves David so much. David was actually the second king in Israel. The first king was Saul, and Saul was did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord. He started off in the right path, but then he deviated. Um, and then David came to the throne, and he did what was righteous in the eyes of the Lord. He had huge hiccups in his life, meaning he was obviously a sinner. Um, but he walked with God, and his, he was the, the man who was uh, after God's own heart. So God loved him, right? But it says here, for the sake of my servant David... So you would think that he's exalting David because David was just amazing and God just loves David. But if you look back to even David and his lineage and who he is, he is exalting David not for the sake of David, but because of the covenant that he made with him. And that covenant directly ties it, ties his lineage to the only one, the only hero, the only name above any name, which is Jesus Christ. 
All right. Um, and this you can find in Second Samuel chapter seven, verses like halfway. Well, verses twelve and thirteen. I'm going to read it for you. It says, when your days, and this is um, the covenant that God did with David when he became king, right? And over here in this passage, she's telling David, hey, I will protect you. I will curse those who curse you. If you stay in my path and you obey me, then pretty much I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to love on you. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to give you wisdom, but you need to follow me. Um, and then here's the covenant that he's that he's pretty much making with David. He says, when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, meaning when you die, when you cease to live, I will raise up your offspring after you, meaning your lineage, who shall come from your body, because it's literally his bloodline, all right? And I will establish the throne for his kingdom forever, all right? That right there is letting us know, David know, um, and reminding us that God is bringing a a, uh, savior, someone who's going to bring salvation to this world, who's going to pay for our sins. And that is none other than Jesus Christ himself. So that's why he holds this covenant, you know, very dear to him. Not just because David was amazing, because God in his righteousness chose David, but because of his sake, because of the plan that he had for salvation. That the Bible says it's it was said before the foundation of the earth. And there has been, even throughout the whole Old Testament, this Messiah that has been prophesied in Isaiah, even in Genesis, we can see that there's this, sal- this Savior that's coming, the Savior that's coming. So that's why even the decision of just saving Hezekiah, it was first for, Jesus, for, for God himself, second for that promised one, Jesus himself, that was going to come through the lineage of David and that covenant that he did with David. Um... So it's amazing. So I read that today and I'm like, okay, God, so you are God-centered God. Whatever you do is for your sake because your sake is always best. Your way is always best. Your reasoning is always best. Your plan is always best. Okay. And for the sake of Jesus himself and the, the whole purpose of him coming to earth. So AKA eternal aspect. So that's what I read in the, in the Old Testament. And then here I come in John, going through the book of John 2, John 16, John 16, 23, it says, Uh, truly truly i say to you whatever you ask and this is jesus jesus speaking to his disciples he says whatever hold on whatever you ask of the father in my name he will give it to you until now you have asked nothing in my name ask and you will receive that your joy may be full so i read this and i'm saying like okay so jesus is saying you're, you, whatever you've been asking God, you've been asking it in the wrong way because you haven't asked it in my name. Whenever it comes to Jesus and when we cling to Jesus and we want to do things in his name because the purpose that his life um, did for us and has for us, um, which is the gospel, um, God's going to answer it. Okay, So it doesn't mean that um, I can ask for both. I ask for both in Jesus' name and I'm going to get it. No, God wants us to understand whatever we ask for it needs to have eternal aspect. It needs to be for um, for his will, all right? Because if you ask for things that are according to God's will, he's going to give it to us. Um, again, we need to align our thinking and our mind to God's. And that's, and we and even looking at 2 Kings and knowing that God does things for his sake and for Jesus' sake, um, let's really, let's think about things that we pray for. You know, it's, I love how this verse here says, when you receive it, you will receive um, joy, like full joy. Um, and that is where our joy comes from, from when, when our answers, our, our prayers are being answered and um, for God's sake and for Jesus' sake. So man, like let's step back and say, every time I pray and I say in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, do we even understand what it is that we're saying? In Jesus' name means that, God, you would do this. Jesus, if you were here, you would do this. Um, and anything that we ask has to have the sole purpose, you know, of um, being according to God's will and God's plan, meaning for his sake. So I'm not saying stop praying for little things. No, I'm saying if we really see God in his word and be saturated in his word and in prayer. Um, so yeah, in prayer. We're going to see our line and our way of thinking um, is going to glorify God. And we're going to see yourself praying for things that bring Him glory and that are for His sake. And then 
the consequence of that is that we're going to see our prayers being answered. Lord, help me to talk to my neighbor about Jesus. Lord, give me the strength, please, to be able to, as a single, and not a single mom, as a, as a stay-at-home mom, to have patience with my kids, to love on them. That right there exalts Jesus. That exalts God. That is what's in the scripture. That goes in the line with what God wants for us, you know? So yes, my prayers will be answered, you know what I'm saying, um, in God's perfect timing. So that really got me thinking, like, man, God does things for himself first, you know, God is a God-centered God and for Jesus. So let whatever I ask in Jesus' name be according to his will. Be things that bring him glory. And then when he answers those um, those prayers, my joy will be full and my joy will be complete. So hopefully you saw how when I read those two passages, they were connected. Because when I read them this morning, I was like, wow, God, this is like, again, proof that your word is living. That is life that you still speak. That you can still, you know, speak to my my life in 2019 as a stay-at-home mom um, in specific ways um, because you have the power to do it. So, um, so yeah, hopefully that wasn't too long. It wasn't too um, complicated. If you don't get it, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, probably message me. We can talk about it um, in detail. But that's about it, guys. Have an amazing day. Um, I am going to go on vacation uh, tonight, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to go live the next couple of days. I will try. I'll keep you guys updated. Um, but either way, if you haven't caught any of my other live videos, I upload those, all those on YouTube and on my Facebook. So, um, the link to my YouTube channel is in my bio, click it there and then you'll see all my previous ones from like the last several months that I've been uploading them on there. So that's it. Have an amazing day. Love you guys. And I'll see you later. Bye.